Okay, let's go ahead and work on the domain and range for these last three on example one. So I left these notes up here so we could look at them. Domain, left to right, range, bottom to top. So looking for the domain, again, I notice arrows. And doesn't that tell me that this parabola is going to go left forever? Yeah, it does. So left forever is negative infinity. So this is the x-axis. Remember, negative infinity is down here. Positive is here. And then I look on the other side and go, oh, well, it goes right forever too. So just like the line, its domain is also negative infinity to positive infinity. And that's because the arrows tell us it goes left forever and right forever. For the range, we have to start at the bottom. And I look down here. I like to roll my pencil and I go nothing, 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 no graph. Oh, the graph starts at zero. Because remember, we're only looking at the y-axis now. The graph starts at zero on the y-axis. And it's sitting on the y-axis. So that means zero is actually a point. Do you guys remember when we did inequalities and when it was actually part of the graph, we used a bracket when it was equal to that point? And we used a parenthesis when it wasn't equal? Well, this is actually equal to zero right there. And then I keep rolling my pencil and I go, whoa, then those two arrows tell me it keeps going up forever. So if it keeps going up forever, that would be infinity. So bottom to top, nothing, 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 nothing. Then I hit zero and the graph starts. So the lowest point, the bottom point is zero included. And the only time we use a parenthesis is if it's an open circle or, or infinities. This is not an open circle, it's part of the graph. So that's why we use a bracket to show it's part of the graph. And then as we roll up, we see it goes up forever, indicated by the arrows. So let's do one more together and then you guys can shut off the video and try the last one on your own. Or you can try both of them on your own if you want to shut the video off now. But uh, this is a big part of your final and a big part of both this test and the next test. So that's why I'm taking so much time to go over it. Okay, next we have domain of the V-shape. So remember, domain, left, to right. Does this graph go left forever? Yes, it does. See the arrow? Does it go right forever? Yes, it does. So just like my first two graphs, this is going to have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity. But notice what the three graphs have in common. Arrows pointing left forever, forever arrows pointing right, arrows pointing left, arrows pointing right, arrows pointing left, arrows pointing right. And that's why all three of them have the same domain. But this one does not have that as a range because you can see down here, there's no part of the graph down here. The graph doesn't start till right here. So for this one, I start bottom to top. And remember, I'm only looking at the y axis when I do range. What y value is that? It's negative one, right? So don't look at the x. We don't care what the x is. We look at what the y is because we're doing range, which are the y values. So the lowest bottom y values, negative 1. Again, it's not an open circle, so it will not get a parenthesis. And then it goes up forever. So again, like the parabola to the left, it goes up forever, which means infinity. So you just have to remember, start with the bottom, go to the top. Start with the bottom, go to the top. Okay, so go ahead and shut off the video now. Try this last one and then turn it back on and we'll compare answers. Okay, so domain, keeping this in mind, left to right. So when there aren't arrows, I like to roll my pencil and I say, what is the leftmost x value? So I'm looking only at the x-axis. What is the leftmost x value? Does 
everybody agree it's negative 3? So we're not looking at y. We're looking at the x-axis, and x is the leftmost x value because there's no arrow. And it's a solid circle, which means it's going to be bracket negative 3. Then I keep rolling my pencil to the right, because remember, domain is left to right. And I say, what is the rightmost x value? And I stop here on the x-axis, and I do 1, 2, 3. So the rightmost x value is 3, but what you should notice, oh, that's an open circle. She told us when it's an open circle, it's a parenthesis, not a bracket. Okay, now we're doing bottom to top because we're doing range. So roll your pencil from the bottom. What's the lowest y value? Not x. We're only looking at the y axis now. What's the lowest y value? And you should see that it is negative 1. And it is an open circle. So at negative 1, we put a parenthesis. And then because range is bottom to top, we go all the way to the top of the graph. What's the highest y value? 1, 2, 3 is the highest y value. So we're only looking at x or at the y-axis. So 3 has a solid circle, so then we do 3 bracket. So the lowest y is negative 1, the highest y is 3. The lowest x is negative 3, the highest x is positive 3 with a parenthesis. And like I said, practice on these. You'll get good at it. Everybody's usually good by the end, but it does take some work here at the beginning. Okay, let's finish off this page then. So highlighter time. Everybody have a highlighter handy? All linear equations. That means every line. And do you remember what lines look like? Y equals MX plus B. So anything that can be written in the form Y equals MX plus B, those are lines, pass the vertical line test. They're functions. And you saw up here, this line easily passed the vertical line test. The only line that fails it are the vertical lines. And that makes sense. If you had a vertical line and you passed a vertical line down over it, wouldn't you hit it way more than one time? You'd hit it an infinite number of times. And vertical lines, remember, only go through the x-axis. So they're named x equals 3, x equals 2, x equals 1. So you'll always know when to put no because it'll be x equals some number. That c is a constant. So x equals some number indicates it's vertical. Vertical lines don't pass the vertical line test because the vertical line hits them many times. So any line of the form y equals mx plus b will pass the vertical line test except for the our vertical lines. So based on that, what we should do is look at these and go, hmm, does this look like y equals mx plus b? What do you think? y equals mx plus b sure does. So we write function. Ooh, ooh special case, only an x. If a line only passes through the x-axis, isn't it vertical? And that means it won't pass the vertical line test. So this is no or not a function. Ooh, here's another special case. So do you remember that? Go ahead and label this y, x. If there's only a y, it's not a regular line. That means it's going to be a line that only goes through the y-axis. And when it only goes through the y-axis, that means it's horizontal. Horizontal lines pass the vertical line test. I could never hit them more than once with a vertical line. So this would be a function. 
And I would just write little reminders to yourself because there's so many questions on upcoming tests and on the final exam about these. So this is a vertical line because it only goes through the X axis and any line that only passes through the X is vertical. This is a horizontal line because it only goes through the Y axis and any line that only goes through the Y, never the X, is going to be horizontal. So just to keep reminding yourself, when you see only one variable, see how this had two? That's how we knew it was a normal line. But these both have one variable. So this one's vertical, that one's horizontal. So what about this next one? Y equals X. Does that look like y equals mx plus b? What if I wrote this? Isn't that the same thing as that one? 1x, nothing out there, plus 0. And isn't that y equals mx plus b? So every line is a function unless it's vertical. So that means yes. And these are the ones you're going to learn about in the next class when it's y equals x squared it's a vertical parabola so it opens up or opens down and as we learned above vertical parabolas are functions so y equals x squared will always be a parabola so yes that's a function and when it's x equals I always remember this is typical we solve for y so it's the vertical parabola but when it's solved for x and has y squared, then it's a horizontal parabola, and that one does not pass the vertical line test, so it's not a function. So when it's solved for y and the x is squared, it's just a regular parabola, and it passes the vertical line test. When it's solved for x, which isn't the typical case. That means it's a horizontal parabola, and that one does not pass the vertical line test. Okay, and we're going to do a lot of review. Like the next two pages are almost all review, so we're going to keep practicing. Don't worry. Okay, let's go ahead and go to page three. And all that practice, I promise you, is right here. Oh, my. This is what the quiz I was going to give you in class. Since we aren't in class any longer, I think I'm going to do it as part of your review for the test. But this is what that um, quiz looks like. Let me put my paper clip on it to hold my pages together. So example three on lesson six, page three, asks us a whole bunch of stuff. Basically, this is just a big review of everything we've learned about functions. So it's saying when x is negative four, what's y? When y is four, what's x? Name the domain, name the range. And then we did intercepts. Earlier, remember when we had that page x-intercept, always make y zero, y-intercept, always make x zero. We had two whole pages of notes on that. So this is just kind of summarizing everything we've learned about functions. So great exercise. And I have two of them, example three and four. So we'll get plenty of practice in. Okay, so this says when x is negative 4. Remember how we said whatever's in parentheses is always your x value. Find y. So when x is negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, what's y? Does everybody agree it's 1? So just trace over here. And don't write y equals 1. Do just like we did with the t table and just write 1. B says when x is negative 2, what is y? So what is y? 2. So just follow it over to the y-axis, and that is 2. 
So now I'd like you to shut off the video. And on the next video, I'll give you the answers to the next three. But go ahead and do those three on your own now.